welcome. It is pub day and I'm Robin Call, your host of Reading with Robin here on A Mighty Blaze. My guest <laughs> is Marcy Dramansky. Marcy, we go so far back. I, we've known each other for a long time and thank you for the beautiful inscription. Very nice is out in paperback last week. But yeah. But it's pub day Tuesday. So we're doing, you know, everything's fiction and we, we make it work. And so we're getting to discuss this very nice cover. I've been saying very nice all over the place. It, I love it. I feel like everybody should hear the phrase very nice and think of my book. So I win, you know? It's a huge win. And I think yeah. I put that on my, on reading with Robin. I'm like, it's going to be a very nice interview. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> very nice if you read Marcy's book, very nice. And I, let me give you an intro and then I will continue to go. Okay, awesome. Here on A Mighty Blaze, Marcy Dramansky is the author of critically acclaimed, acclaimed novels, The Red Car, Bad Marie, Twins, and Very Nice. She's received fellowships from McDowell Colony and the Edward F. Albee Foundation. She lives in New Jersey, with, in Montclair, New Jersey, with her daughter. I have been a fan since I read the first bit of twins was the first one right yeah we had an interview i remember it so distinctly it was early in the morning my baby was asleep i'm like please don't wake up and it went really well so oh my god that was yeah those were back on the days at whjj 9 20 a.m in providence mm -hmm. and there were so many people who i interviewed who were like either in laundry rooms or hiding in bathrooms <laughs> Yeah, it was seven o'clock in the morning and you noted that in the beautiful inscription. And yeah. yeah, I've been a fan, Marcy, since day one. And I have you in this, you know, you fall into this category of just brilliant, smart, funny, like, oh my God, did she say that kind of book? Uh, like I put you with like Jamie Attenberg, Laura Zygman, Marcy Germanski. That's like a little dream team. That's really nice. And I've been loving their books recently too. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, those kinds of books. And yeah. if you guys have not read those, read those also. But that's like my dream read. There are a lot of books I enjoy reading different, you know, genre and for different, uh, I can be in the mood for a different book. But one of those books, like your books, that's the kind of book I'm always in the mood for. Right. And I, I just start it and I go, what? Like, oh my God, this is amazing. And, and just, it's uh, just so cutting, uh, observational and, um, just you know it the the, the prose the the brilliance the um the hilarity the like the honesty that's what i love about a marcy Dramansky book and and this title very nice yeah. i mean so start it was with, the only title <laughs> is that so was this and then i love too that they did such a different cover the ice uh, blue green whatever cover from the hardback yeah, do, I do i have that one too yeah, just a, it, only if it's there. This is there's this is a very low pressure, a mighty blaze interview. We're gonna ask the tough question. Where's your hardcover, Marcy? I'd have, I'd have to run to another room. I oh, could do don't it. run. No, no, no run. Okay. <laughs> you guys can just go online and look at it, but it's very yeah. different. Yeah. I also loved it. And so I love them both. This cover was actually the British cover in the UK had a version of this cover. And the, and they kind of spiffed it up for the US. They kind of changed the font and everything like that. But I love this cover. So I actually suggested it. I'm like, why don't we just go with this? And so I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is very nice. How many times did you guys just do that in marketing <laughs> meetings? It and happens to me all the time. Any email I get where someone says that they like the book and conversation, but I'm all for it. I want people to think of very nice and think of me. And I also want, this is a joke, I don't really mean it, but whenever I see a really good red car, I think of my book. And so that's what I want other people to do too. <laughs> so I take pictures of red cars, the nice ones, and I post them on Instagram. Yes, so, you have, yeah. I love that. That's funny. Yeah. I think of you when I see bad Marie's and I oh, see yeah. twins. Yeah. No oh, yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm ubiquitous, right? Well, yeah. Exactly. You've, you're like embedded in there like a bookish <laughs> right. worm. So that was so smart. So they sort of had the cut, they had the British cover and then you tweaked it and they used it. Yeah, yeah, that worked out great. And the title was actually, I wrote this as a short story first. So the very first chapter of the book was once a short story and it was published in Lena Dunham's Lenny Letter, um, and which, is, which I loved and which isn't around anymore. But I just kept on writing this story. I just liked the story so much that I just kept on writing it. And so it was funny that I was able to keep the title for the story and it worked for the book. 
I love that. So was the actual first chapter as it was, that it was the story or no? Pretty much in entirety. I, there were a couple of tiny details that I changed, like the color of the dog had to be clarified as I changed things along, <laughs> you know, it was very important. But essentially the first chapter was a standalone short story. Oh, that, yeah. I love that. Well, you've got mother, daughter, you've got dog, you've got creative writing professor, you've got yeah. hair. Again, I'll say you've got dog because, you know, I'm obsessed. So. I, I mean, where did that, so in the short story, what was the nugget for that? And then the nugget, talk the about nugget that. for that, I mean, I think there's so many things happening in our culture that's just completely changing. And at the time that I was writing, I think the Me Too movement was sort of gearing up. It hadn't really happened yet. And I'm so glad that it did. But I had another friend who wanted to write about inappropriate student teacher relationships. Mm -hmm. And I just felt kind of like, I had this moment of like jealousy. I was like, well, I can't write that because uh -huh. that hasn't happened to me. And then I realized that as a writer, you can write whatever you want. And I always wanted to write that, so I did. And so that's how that started. Well, does that happen sometimes? Excuse me, um, I have, speaking of dogs, I feel a piece of Benny's. Oh, good. Fur flying into my, I got dressed up for you lipstick. There's always fur <laughs> everywhere. And I would could have ignored it for the next 20 minutes, but I would have never made it. It would have driven me and the viewers on a Mighty Blaze nuts. But when you share bits of stories and you have a lot of author friends and you know, you sort of like throwing them around or not even so much what are you working on, but it comes out. And do you have those moments of like, oh no, they just said, cause it could be completely different. We know. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? And then is it like, if you write a book, depending on who's comes out, when do they think, wait a minute, we had that talk and it, all along it's in your head. So do you feel this need to say, just so you know, you could say that about anything. I was thinking that too, just so you know. I mean, what do you do with that? You know, it doesn't happen that much. It did happen with this because I did have a lunch with somebody who had this experience that she she never wrote that book. Uh -huh. And so I wrote this book, but this book has, I mean, it has yeah. zero, it, has, it doesn't even have her story to the smallest degree. And I think, I mean, what was, my dark Vanessa just came out recently. Yeah. I mean, it's something that's just written about. It's, it's yeah. just, yeah. So I, I never felt any any trouble about that. No, right. I, I wouldn't, but I know that things happen. There's a story, oh, I don't want to digress too much, but right. I remember posting something on Facebook and an author said, oh, I was thinking of writing that story. And then like people were jumping on and it got like really funny. Oh. It, it was just such an innocent, like, look at this article. Some of you guys, historical writers, this would be a great story. And somebody, an author was thinking, I'll tell you the rest of the story well, later. I'll just have one more. Oh, Liz Gilbert wrote about that in Big Magic, how she wrote like a hundred pages of a book and it was, and it ended up being, she, she talked about ideas floating and you had to grab it. And Ann Patchett grabbed her idea and wrote her book. It was crazy. I so, love that. So yeah. Anne grabbed Elizabeth's idea? Is that what It was said? just sort of like this weird magical thing where she was going to write a book about, oh, it was State of Wonder, which is a book which said about a pharmaceutical company and a drug forest in the rainforest. And basically, Elizabeth Gilbert had written over 100 pages of a book that was set oh, in the rainforest and about the sort of, and she didn't finish that book. So Anne Patchett, in her mind, it was like this sort of metaphysical, incredible thing where Anne grabbed the same idea in the universe. Wow, I love that. Well, and yeah, I love Elizabeth's nice. book. And it, there yeah. are these things floating around. it. There's yeah. absolutely an energy and essence and... And, and it would never come out the same, but like no. this just bizarre thing where, where that's happened and we, yeah. and, we and we've, and we've seen it. And, mm -hmm. and in the book world, there's just, you know, there's some, it's not as if there's not enough competition there anyway. So student teacher inappropriate relationships, those are real. Yeah. We talk about Rachel and Becca and the professor and, <laughs> and, and princess the pup. I love princess. Yeah. I mean, that's like a bunch of questions. I love them all. I grew up with standard poodles and I have cats now, but I think except for the red car, I feel like a standard poodle tries to sneak its way into everything I write. And so it, it had been a break since I had a standard poodle in a book. And there's actually a professor that the he, the he this is very loosely based on who actually has a standard poodle. So if I'm going to take a character and sort of steal it from a real person who also had a standard poodle, that was terrific. That's perfect. Yeah, and then the mother daughter like kind of wanting the same man. Um, I, this is used to be a big secret about me, but I wrote about it in an essay. Is that I've been watching General Hospital for like <laughs> thirty years or something crazy. Like, and so one of the greatest storylines is when mothers and daughters like have sex with the same man, and it's just like, oh my god! Right? And, yeah, and and somehow I really love literary fiction, but I also just like garbage, and so I kind of. <laughs> 
I kind of feel like very nice with my combination of my love for really bad TV and my love for writing good fiction and writing fiction that people would enjoy. And so I didn't know when I started this book that it would happen, by the way. I don't write with an outline and nothing is planned. I just knew I have a friend who's a writing teacher named Sarah Levine. If she's watching, she likes to get credit. And she came, she actually came to our reading at the Cardigan Connection for the Red Car. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, but Sarah, I, I was having trouble writing and I finished the short story and she's like, well, just write from the next point of view. So I had already written the first chapter. So she's yeah. like, write from the point of view of the mother. So I did. And then I wrote from the point of view of the professor. And then suddenly I saw this kind of thing of like this attraction happening. And while I was writing, am I like, and I thought, am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to take that route of mm -hmm. have the mother and daughter want the same man and not be honest with each other and I'm like yes and so yeah very nice yeah very nice <laughs> I love that way back to, back to uh, General Hospital for a yeah. second because yeah. I'm a fan from you too look at oh, that you kidding I'm like, you <laughs> you find out. I started I at you. Ryan's Hope at 12 30 I think mm -hmm. then to all my children one life to live General Hospital from like yeah. 1976 7 to, mm -hmm. wow. um, let's see Emily was born probably till 1994 five oh, so you don't you don't know about Ava and Kiki anymore right you're you're kind of off the show oh no I don't is that what, okay. when yeah when was I don't general hospital really? I'm embarrassed because I was right there but no that doesn't even sound familiar who did yeah, they, that who happened they recently. What I know that. it might have been happening concurrently as I was writing oh no it's I didn't even know it was still on it's still on unfortunately it's been on as of two weeks ago and it just they, they, they've run out of episodes for the first time ever so I didn't realize I know they all moved off of mainstream tv and then they went to a soap channel but I didn't know nope, they they're not even on a soap opera channel they're still on ABC the they're hell? like one of the only remaining soap operas very nice I don't watch tv <laughs> We should, we should have had a drinking game. We should have done the drinking game. I'm going to have some more coffee every time I think. Okay, we're having we're coffee. <laughs> Wait, where's, yours, where's yours from? Yours looks like it's from a really cool place in Montclair. I have a place across the street from me. Look, I get to, I get to endorse Sarah. This is yeah. called Local. It's a local cafe. And they, they, oh. it, they are so local that they are across the street from me. And oh, 10 God. minutes before our interview, I looked out the window. I'm like, there's no line. And I ran across the street and I got coffee. So I, I was know, cutting it close. I ran into the kitchen and popped in a Keurig. That's and safer. That right. was also very nice. <laughs> so I didn't realize General Hospital. I, it's funny because I yeah. had Deb Royce, who had a part on One Life to Live. Mm -hmm. like, oh, no, no, all my children. I'm sorry. She was um, Erica Kane's sister on One Life to Live. So she wrote a book called Finding Mrs. Ford. So when we did the interview, we, we went just down the, the rabbit hole of the ABC soap operas. But I, yeah, we used to come home from school and watch them. We watched them yeah, in college. Yeah, right. There's a, there's a TV show called The Goldbergs, which is set in the 80s. I know, oh, I love that show. And that's great. There, there are scenes in that show where the high school daughter and the younger brother sit and they watch General Hospital together and it kind of... Oh, I oh, right. love that show. Now yeah. that show is so clever. Beverly oh. Goldberg is the best mother ever. Yes. And our family, that's a family fun show. And also yeah. they were in the furniture business, which my husband is. So we, right. yeah, we, anyway, again, I digress with Reading with Robin on a Mighty Blaze with Marcy Dramansky. <laughs> Shout outs to her mom and Sarah and the local coffee. Yeah. And it's all very nice. So was this always the title? Yeah, this was always the title. And so at the very end, in the very last chapter, when I'm writing it, I like went on a riff where she was so mad at a professor who had done so many horrible things. And in the last chapter, when she's so angry about everything, she gets mad about how he uses language. Like when he's sort of begging her for his life, he uses the word like really or very, and that pisses her off. And so it was kind of fun to go back to the beginning, but to have it in a completely different context. And Again, so because it's such a smart book. If you have not read Very Nice, just give yourself one of those treats and be like, this is a sure thing. I mean, to me, yes. this this kind of book, you, you're welcome. Well, you are books in general, but like, it's a sure thing. And I, there's nothing like settling down into a book. I mean, I'm all for, and I get books sent to me and, and I, I love finding new authors and I do all the time. But when there's a book like this, and I remember when it came in hardcover last year, it's like, thank you, Marcy, for writing this book. <laughs> Specifically for me, because it's, this is my sensibility. This is, um, you know, it's all about me and what I like to read. But I, I know that my readers like, a, you know, a wide range and, and, I, and I do too. And it depends on what you're in the mood for. But right. like I said, 
this is something I'm always in the mood for, like a very nice book. Yeah. But it does make you really think about language and creative writing process yeah. and using words and word tracks. So are you very mindful of people who are repetitive with words that we should probably never hear? Out oh, the sure. Like I, sometimes I edit people's novels and whenever people like they muddle or they mutter or they, they speak or they scream or they ejaculate, you know, I'm always cutting things out. <laughs> and then at the same time, I'm always sort of writing in this sort of I sometimes it really exasperate my readers because I have my characters talk where they don't always use contractions. Yeah. And I really enjoy that for some reason. I still haven't figured out why it seems essential, but I will read these reader comments saying, why are they talking this way? And I, I just love that they do that. Yeah. I, I actually do talk that way oh, sometimes yeah. for a reason. Okay. Because it also jumps out. It's unexpected. Maybe it doesn't feel yeah. conversational, but yet it it's intentional. And, yeah. you know, so you're, I, I think that that's, what are some other response? So now the book came out last year. It came yeah. out paperback last week. Right. So are, are you somebody that likes to check out what readers have to say? I or kind of love it. Just you're not supposed to, to go onto Goodreads, but I really do enjoy it because I, I guess maybe a, you just always want to hear about yourself. You're narcissistic in a way. Yeah. Then, um, there's some people who really love this book and hate, hate all of the characters. And I find that so interesting and it didn't occur to me that would happen. And that's a really common thread. And I didn't hate any of them. And oh, so, no, I didn't yeah. either. Is it, do yeah. people say they don't like them because they're not likable characters? They're not likable characters. And I, they do. Yeah. And I guess everybody does terrible things to each other in this book, but they always are aware of it and they always feel guilty. They do have some kind of conscience. They they're, just can't help yeah. themselves. Very redemptive. Yeah, there are readers who just like everything yeah, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and I and also I should I don't think I even said go to marcydermansky.com for more information. You can find her also on Instagram is mostly. You're not Yeah, I do Instagram, I do Twitter. My Facebook page is private, but right. I do Instagram and Twitter. And I, on Instagram I like to post lots of pictures of flowers and I you do. You're and you're such a beautiful artist as Thank well. You. People yeah. don't always Do you have any artwork right there or Sure, let's see. What do you got, Marcy? What do I got? What do you got? This is I what I've been doing during quarantine. I've been making little flower paintings. Oh, I love. There's a little flower painting. They're so happy. I love your painting. Flower painting. So gorgeous. I, I think I bugged you. I might have bugged you about this last year, but any I, any sense of like making note cards out of these so we can order them? You know, I probably should. I've had requests and I I, I, I just sold the dog picture for $50. You did? Wait. Oh, wait, I can't see you. I think I, you might have messed the camera okay. up. Yeah. Because I, mean, I asked you. I yeah, I mean, $50. Yeah, somebody asked me if I would paint their friend's dog for a, for a present. And she's like, what do you want for money? I'm like, I don't know. So I asked for $50, which is probably way too little, but it was fun. I had nothing else to do. Oh, I love it. Do you have a picture of it? Um, yeah, um, yeah, I I yeah, I love that. <laughs> I'm gonna put Benny in. I'm, I'm gonna put in a, uh, yeah, I haven't gotten it yet. But Jane Green, when I had her on, uh -huh. on reading with Robin, she's doing these beautiful clam cells and she's doing decoupage and painting. So, oh, you got one? I'm pretty fancy, right? <laughs> I didn't, we did not set this up. Wait, can I see it closer? The seahorse, yeah. Oh my God. I didn't know she was doing them for some reason. And when we were talking- Oh yeah, she's been doing them. She's posting them on Instagram and I sent her some daffodils and she sent me a seahorse. And that was, that was one of the nice things about, sometimes when you have a book comes out, you meet other writers because they connect to your work. And that was like one of the funnest things with I, meeting Jane through this book. I love that. And yeah. and a Mighty Blaze audience should know that was not set up. That was completely out of head because Jane and I chatted last week and she was showing them and I follow her on Instagram. So mm -hmm. I have no idea how I missed that, yeah. but she's making me one of Benny. Not oh, to that's spot. really Benny nice. Benny, yeah. yes, I, it, I, it may be here today or tomorrow, but- Now it's like a contest. Now I need to draw Benny for you. <laughs> I'm just saying, Marcy, I mean, you know, he's all over Instagram at Benny yeah. Irving McCorgie, so you could find him, but- Okay. I love, and also Randy Susan Myers is painting rocks. Yeah. Those are gorgeous. There's so much. I'm I'm seeing like a an author co-op of your other um, talents. When I was much younger, Sophia Coppola used to have. There were these profiles of her. And she's like, oh, all artists have second talents. Yes. And second sidelines. And I was kind of really angry and, and really jealous of her. And I didn't have a second sideline, but so now I have my flower painting. So. You totally have it. I would order note cards in a second, and yes. they would be very nice. So I'm chatting yes. with Marcy Dermanski here on Mighty Blaze. This was fun. And
huge, huge fan. You must order a copy of Very Nice. You will just, I mean, it is, I know like the kinds of readers who I put this in their hands and that's what I do. And I always challenge readers who say, well, I like whatever the genre is. And I'm like, stretch a little, right? try a little something else. Um, What else are you reading that you, that you want to plug? Um, Let's see. I mean, I just read, I just read such such a fun age, um, which was about a black babysitter for like a really upscale white couple. And it was, that was when it really hit issues really hard, but it was really enjoyable. So it was kind of like a a perfect mix. And that was the first book I was able to read from beginning to end during quarantine. Like it really sucked me in. So I'd recommend that. Yeah. I I love Lily King's new book, um, Friends and Lovers or Writers and Lovers. I can never remember the title. No, it's right. It's because uh, Courtney Sullivan's is Friends and Strangers and 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 Lily's is writers and lovers. Yeah. And so it's very easy to conflate. Um, but yeah, I, I would think these books are very authorly, writerly, bookishly book. Yeah. Kind of story. Yeah, that, that book too, I mean, that, that book is about writers. And, and when I was actually in, in writing school, one of the things they, they always teach you, when I was a teacher at Gotham, they always tell you not to write about writers as if it's so overdone. But I've been writing about writers for two books in a row now. And, and I just kind of, I love, writers are just weird and interesting. And I love reading them and I write them and, you know, well, it, I'll go somewhere else. Yeah. I, I agree, Marcy. I love books that have little nuggets of, you know, people who are really into their books big yeah. time. It's a real peak. And when Lily was talking about Writers and Lovers, that was the last event I did, the last live oh, so great. Ninth. And she said when she brought it to her editors, they were like, oh, great, a book about writers and yeah. people. And if, if, for you know, if you There's guys- There's something so honest about like the waitress. We've all writers have, the, have had the waitressing job or the lifeguarding job and we're all struggling for money and we all just think, oh, this is never going to work. And there's something so recognizable and universal and moving about it, I feel like. Oh, yeah. And it's a little voyeuristic too. I mean, people who are really into like what goes on at at these uh, colonies or what happens in these workshops or yeah. what, a lot of, there's a lot of that. And so it's a real um, interesting look into it, fictional, of course, of, mm-hmm. of what's going on. So did you, who, did you have somebody in mind when you based this professor on, or was it just purely? You know, it wasn't like people want to know. And part, part of the person who I based the professor on would be hilarious. It's, and, and I hope she does, hasn't figured herself out, but she's a woman. So <laughs> there you go. And she also wasn't, um, I mean, one of the interesting things that that I'm nervous about talking about just because oh, it's so explosive, but it's about race. And so this this the professor in my book is Pakistani, and I think she was the writer I was based on was of a different race. But it's a little bit about writers and how they're not paid enough in my book, and about working at universities and getting jobs because you're a person of color, but then not being paid enough because you're just an adjunct. And and it was just kind of I mean, and that was something that was a little bit scary for me to write about too because because I'm not a person of color and it's like if you want to write only about what you know it's just so limiting and Mm -hmm. one wonderful compliment that I got from this book was there's an author in Montclair her name is Benil Little and when this book first came out she actually pulled out of her car to compliment me on this book and what she said and it was just so I mean, I don't want to get any credit. She just said, you're really good at writing black people because you don't make a big deal about it. You just put them in the book and it's fine. It's just as if everything is moving on and you don't stop and you don't hesitate. And because I was, I mean, I was totally nervous about that. Of course, then that's yeah. a really huge compliment. And yeah, yeah, there were so many things when I was rereading because mm-hmm. I read it last summer and a lot of things that are obviously topical, but even more so. Yeah, and then you never know if you would write it differently a year from now than what I did back, you know. And, and, yeah it's interesting but it's it's just right and it's oh, it's, it's yeah. yeah when I was reading it when I took a picture on the hammock the other day and I was <laughs> going through it I was like yeah. I read it differently than I did read That's it like interesting. Summer. and so, one one reader was really angry at me because of how Zahid was treated in the end he kind of walks out of the house in his bathing suit <laughs> And, and I felt like, well, no, that's not really true because he's really walking into this house with a completed novel and a lot of money coming his way. Like, I feel like he's going to be okay. Like, yeah. I really, like, when a book ends, I know what happens after it's finished. Like, you could say, well, what happened? And I had one really fun book club where they wanted to know if the parents in these two books get back together, and they're not. But people, but I know this, but it's not written. So I had people raise their hands and do surveys and stuff. I like love that. that. I love that you have yeah. such a great way of connecting with your readers and thinking about it. Because sometimes an author will say, 
the book's done. I don't think about them. I know though. I just, I just stop writing. I leave people kind of like on a ledge uh, and that annoys some people and some people love that. But she, like she, she's going to do great after this book ends. So pardon? yeah. And I like to be left like, I like it to yeah. be a satisfying ending. I like mm -hmm. to, I don't like it all tied up, but you know, where in your head, where yeah. you think it might go. Yeah. Um, but that's so interesting that people want to do. So what are most well, we don't really have spoilers. I don't know. The book was has been out for a year, but a lot of people that are, I guess we don't want to give too much away, but no, we don't want I think to that's really an interesting way to do a book club. So is that something you, have you been doing much of that? That only just time? happened one time. It was just sort of this funny magical experience where people really wanted to know. And I, sometimes I, you just have to really keep yourself entertained and book clubs are fun and you drink okay. wine. And so I threw it back to them. And then it was sort of really interesting to hear what people thought. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like throwing, I like throwing things back to them. And also interesting that you were talking about being able to read Kylie Reed's book, such a fun age from, you know, beginning to end, because there haven't been many books that I've been able to just really it's sit down and read at this time. Yeah. And that's yeah. something we've been talking about right. in the, for the past, what has it been now? 13 weeks, who's counting something oh. like that. But I think now that it's summer or, you know, once the weather sort of changed. It's, it's nice to have a book. Yeah. yeah, and be able to sit outside. Otherwise, I have started many books that are very good. I just yeah. didn't have that same energy to keep going. So what are you reading next? What do you think you'll be able to finish next? Um, I went back. I've been going on and off. I've been rereading Fingersmith from Sarah Waters, which I loved about the uh, first time I read it. I just, cause I just sort of was like, I always feel like maybe I have something to learn from that book because, it, you know, it's a real thriller like nothing else. But I, that's a book I haven't been able to get through. So I just finished reading a book. Oh, I just blurbed a book that's coming out in the fall that's really great. What is it? By, by Emily Gray Tedrow called The Talented Mrs. Farwell. Oh, great. That, that's really good. And, and that's coming out in October. And it's, it's like the, ta the, ti the title is almost like The Talented Mr. Ripley. Yes. It's, it's like the, the main character is a female and she's a villain and she's just obsessed with art. And so she works at a really small town in the Midwest and she keeps stealing all of this money from the town <laughs> so that she can buy art. And then she feels so guilty that she keeps making money and funneling it back into the town, but she's never putting enough money back in. So like the swimming pools are going dry. Like it felt, <laughs> I'm so worried about swimming pools this summer, which, you know, and I'm reading this book about a criminal who's taking so much money from a town that the pools are empty and it was really good. So I read that too. And that's coming out in, in, Oct in October. Yeah, I have yeah. a feeling anything that you enjoy, I would absolutely love. Yeah, I really like that. So right now I'm kind of bookless. I mean, I have so many books, but I'm what? going back. So I went back to Fingersmith again. So yeah. Bookless. I can't, I, I'm tripping over books. I've got books. I've taken over the house in different ways because I have different projects I'm doing. So I'm very visual. So yeah. I have different um, like little setups of books in various places. Yeah. And, and that's just how I see things. So I'm like, okay, this is a good project. How does this look? So you can just trip over books here, but I, I do really get excited when one comes and I'm just like, I know I should be reading something that I'm working on for an interview, but oh my God, such and such came, I'm reading that. That's so great. yeah, I'm very excited, but you all have got to read. <laughs> can I do it too? It'll be fun. Okay. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I'll take a yeah. screenshot. Okay. Yeah, smile, very nice. <laughs> It's just a winner. It's fabulous. I, I'm just excited for anything you ever write and draw. Thank and you. And you're welcome. Go to marcygermanski.com. Follow her on Twitter. Follow her on Instagram. And look for her new shop on the on Etsy soon. She'll, be, soon. she'll be painting your dog. Yeah. Um, and all, all the best. And keep in touch, Marcy. And when we can do in-person events again. I love coming to Rhode Island. I know, I love, and I've, and I've wanted to do something in Montclair. You've got such an enclave of writers there. Great, yeah, it's got a great community. When we yeah. can, I can get some of that coffee, when we can travel again, but in the meantime, it's great to be online and um, very yeah. nice. Okay, <laughs> perfect, that's a perfect one. book, she's really very nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love you, Marcy. Love you too, Rob. Thank you so much.